from Nigeria's financial capital, Lagos, the home of channels television. This is Business Morning, Tuesday, February the 7th. I am Bolson Mavai, sitting in today for Harriet Agbeye. We welcome you to the program. Now, this is in the news as we speak. The, today's the D-Day for the FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange and S&P Dow Jones to sign that partnership deal to co-develop or jointly develop, if you want to use that adjective, for an index for the Nigerian government, treasury bills and bonds listed on the FMDQ platform. That event scheduled for 10 o'clock will get underway as we speak, and in the next couple of minutes, we'll get Harriet Agbe, who is a business morning anchor and producer, to talk to us on the phone uh, what she's seen on the ground as this very important event get on the way. This is the first time in years in history, to be more precise, that Nigeria's government treasury bills and Naira bonds will have an index that's jointly developed between a Nigeria trading platform where those securities are domiciled in partnership with an international organization such as the Standard and Poor's, the uh, owners and the developer of the S&P index on the New York Stock Exchange and other indexes around the world in various markets and jurisdiction. A very important milestone for Nigeria today. Remember very quickly, just about a year and a half ago, Nigeria's government bonds was kicked out of the J.P. Morgan Emerging Markets Global Index as well as the Barclays Local Bond Index since that development. Nigeria has had little or no exposure of its bonds globally, with the exception of the euro bonds that you can find how they're performing on the Bloomberg terminal. Now, FMTQ OTC Securities Exchange is bringing S&P Dow Jones from the United States to the table to sign this deal and expose the Nigeria's government treasury bills and bonds. We talk about every day here on the program, and you see elsewhere on the global scene and see how this will help investors and perhaps as we move on, how will this impact on corporate bond issuers on the FMDQ Securities Exchange? That is one development that we are tracking this morning and this day. And you can see the corporate headquarters of FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange in Victoria Island, Lagos. That's uh, some little visuals that we get for you about the ceremony that will get uh, underway. The signing will be within the hour and we're tracking that for you throughout today here on Channels Television. Keep that in mind. Meantime, let's step into the hydrocarbon industry. The Honorable Nana Ibokwe's House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee has summoned the central bank governor, Godwin Emefiele, over the $1 billion allegedly sold to petrol products importers and retailers last year. The... Uh, well, the representatives investigating says they want to know why the central bank will engage in the sale of foreign exchange from the IOCs to the retailers and importers of petrol products. Meantime, the head of financial markets at the central bank, Alvan Ikoku, already told the committee at one of the public hearings that the IOCs, that is the international oil companies, sale of foreign exchange to both the regulator and the petrol importers was perfectly in order. That was the statement from the central bank. And that committee, the hardcore committee at the House of Representatives still sitting and asking all parties to step forward. Now the head of the central bank has been asked to step forward once again and provide further clarity on that forex transactions. And keeping with the extractive industry, the Nigerian Content Development and Monetary Board says plans is on the way to conduct a forensic audit of the oil and gas industry. So what does, the, what does this board want? Uh, basically, is to uh, seek or uh, track infractions, allegedly, that some oil and gas companies or entities within the industry have been making deductions but not remitting them to the Nigerian Content Development Bond, that's the NCDF. That fund at the end of November last year had a balance of 600 million 
dollars. Now, the Nigerian Content Development uh, Monetary Board, which is the uh, midwife of the fund, now wants to do an audit and find out if all the remittances or deductions and remittances have been duly passed into the Treasury single account known as the TSA. That action is getting on the way as far as the NCDMB is concerned, a forensic audit of the oil sector, tracking monies drawn into hundreds of millions of dollars. And a Nigerian team is heading to Rwanda in East Africa this week to begin another round of negotiations with 53 African states under the Continental Free Trade Agreement. The agreement is to further expand cross-border trade between the 54 African countries, Nigeria being one of the biggest markets on the continent and most populous country and the largest economy. So the conversations will get on the way this week. Today is Tuesday, the second day of the week. That team will be leaving for Kigali, the Rwandan capital. Because the African Union has set December this year as the deadline for the adoption of the CFTA. The free trade agreement uh, is expected to be signed by 53 countries in Africa, expected to promote further Africa-Africa trade relations. What's the state of the economy, by the way? Of course, hundreds of Nigerians protest poor state of the economy, policy directions and what have you, prices of goods and commodities, inflation, exchange rate on the Monday as we started the new business week. At the same time, just at the time when the vice president, uh, Young Professor Yomi Shibajo is sitting in Abuja with the organized private sector and the economic management team to put final torches touch to the National Economic Recovery Plan. That document is set for delivery before the end of February. It's been a number of months in the making, but now the government says that recovery plan 2017-2020 tenor will be formally unveiled before the end of this month. No date was set on the calendar, but that was what part of what the Vice President, uh, acting on behalf of President Buhari yesterday, uh, sat on with the organized private sector and other uh, stakeholders that economic recovery plan is in the making. So, um, what's the atmosphere there? We saw a bit of a small uh, footage that you sent earlier. Nice of you. Thank you very much. Uh, is it that of... Uh, well, it looks like something big is going down there, isn't it? Awesome. It's a very big day for FMDQ OTC, Securities Exchange, and for S&P uh, Dow Jones Index. Now, of course, you mentioned it at the start of the program. Today is a three-in-one, a triple whammy, actually. So FMDQ OTC and Securities Exchange will be signing a memorandum of understanding with S&P Dow Jones Index for the development and publication of the core branded fixed income indices in the Nigerian debt capital market. So there will be an unveiling of a debut S&P, FMDQ, core branded index. But then again, today will be the adoption, or formal adoption, of the S&P Nigeria Sovereign Bond Index. Now what this index is, it tracks the performance of local currency denominated sovereign debt publicly issued by the government of Nigeria in its domestic market. That's almost the same thing as what the S&P, FMDQ, Core Branded Index will be doing. It will also be tracking the performance of local currency uh, denominated sovereign debt publicly issued by the federal government. That's and it's the first of a series of fixed income indices. It's quite an exciting time for uh, patronizing, taking a look at trading from yesterday, you read those numbers out, you still see that investors' apathy towards the fixing income segment of the market remains pretty strong in spite of what we see going on in the equities market. So the event has started right about now, and I'm very closely following it. I'm, ex I'm ex as excited yeah. as everybody right. who's actually here today. Yes, you're excited, and thanks for raising the curtain today. We'll be back at 1.30 with you on Business Incorporated to bring us up to speed. We'll see all that is happening today, and there's very important information. Let's take a break. When we come back, we get still sticking with the market.